Okay, so welcome everybody to the first live stream on our new Twitch channel for Coders Care. Um, scheduled for today is a stream about... Um, I have to turn down some sound here first, so it's better like this. Um, scheduled for today is a tutorial about um, data processing with fluid templates, which is something we presented at the Type 3 camp in Dresden, where we have been recently, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to do basically the same thing I showed over there. So if you already joined the session, some of the things um, you might uh, may already know, but uh, there are new th things to show because uh, during the session, for example, it was not possible to show the debug output and other things, so we fixed that so far, so it should be better than the last time. And there were some improvements about the stream itself as well. For example, I've got a new headset, which has been sponsored by uh, For Future and Kai Strobach. Thanks for that. So uh, it already worked out that we do something for you and uh, in return uh, you can do something for us. We will come to that later. So let's start with an um, actual session. Now uh, you can um, use the chat to ask questions, but if you want me to answer the questions, please, uh, since this is a tutorial session, wait until the actual tutorial is over, but still you can ask some questions in between and I will take care of them later on. So now let's go to the um, data processing thingy and I will just switch the screen now so that you can see what this is actually about. So first of all, I should explain what data processing actually is. So let's see where this actually comes from. We have the content object section in the TypeScript reference, and they are uh, fluid template C objects. And together with these fluid template C objects, there is a property which is called data processing. You can find that uh, in the TypeScript reference. And as you might notice, when you just switch to earlier versions, this has been around for quite a while. So the property data processing is even available in the 7.6 documentation. But uh, we are going to show this based on the latest Type 3 version. So this is about um, Type 3.9. So, okay, what this data processing is about is actually just turning um, the way um, fluid templates are rendered. Usually when you use uh, fluid templates, you have a plugin or you have a page and you create that page um, with TypeScript and um, just a bit of TypeScript and then the rest is done by plugins and uh, PHP me methods and they hand over data to the fluid template, to the view and the view is then rendering stuff. Um, with the data processing thingy, you just do it the other way around. You have a fluid template and within the fluid template, you can call these data processors and the data processors then deliver data to the data array. For example, there are several processors or processor types. When you scroll down in the session, uh, uh, in the section, you will see comma separated value processor. You will see a files processor database query processor, gallery processors, and um, others, which are already delivered out of the box by the core. Especially the menu processor is something that we will uh, show you intensively uh, with uh, examples later on. So, I think um, you got the idea. We have a fluid template. You can hand over uh, stuff to the fluid template with this data processors and now let's see how this actually works out um, For example, we can go to a client page uh, That we actually did for a client of us uh, just a few months ago with uh, which is already based on type 3 CMS 9 and I will switch to that screen now So that you can actually see what we're talking about we have a page tree and most of the front-end output of that page 
is actually based on menus. So um, even some things that would be done would have been done with news uh, in other um, solutions has been done with menus in this case. So uh, I will show you how we created that page based on the data processing. Just have to go to another screen and remove the Chrome window so that you can actually see the PHP Storm window. Just close down some of the files and go to the configuration. As you can see, um, this has been done based on a side package. Um, so when you want to know, or, or if you want to know what a side package actually is, you should go to another uh, stream that we will do later on with this, which might be a series about uh, how to create your own page based on a side package. Or there are other um, tutorial videos already available at the channel of the Tab3 company, um, where you can see how a side pack, uh, package is actually created and how you can use that. So basically, this is something that you should al uh, already have available when you want to repeat the stuff that you will see in this tutorial. So this is not just for beginners to set up your new site and do something from scratch. It's uh, supposed to be um, there so that you have a, a side package already available and you can do something with that. So basically we have the configuration part and in the configuration you will see some TypeScript and when you open the TypeScript file you will see that there is um, a page object with some header data and other, other things and then we have the body tag C object and then the first thing is a fluid template which is actually creating the page. Um, it takes some variables here, level field, uh, backend layout, next level, and backend layout to just get the selected backend layout for that uh, specific page. And then it uh, provides additional things that you might already know. For example, the template root path over here, partial root path, layered root path, all that stuff. And the variables um, to provide, for example, a selected category and uh, the page language data and some other things that we will take care of um, in the fluid templates. But now uh, this is the first part of the data processing and as you can see data processing is basically structured like a COA. So uh, you have numbers like 10, 20, 30 so that you can even put things in between to um, get the right order because sometimes it might be that you have your own data processors providing for example a kind of registers that will then be used in other data processors. So it might be necessary to have a certain order of the data processors. The first one is a very easy one. That's the one that is already provided when you create a, a site package with a um, site package creator, site package builder actually. Um, this is something I can show later on. Uh, but you will get something like this. It's just a references, field name is media. And this actually means when we go to the Chrome window now and go to the back end of that page that we have, for example, a page over here and we have something about, maybe we can go to the columns view, which might be easier to see. And then we have the resources tab over here. And in the resources tab, you can create um, a connection to an image. For example, we go to mission here, there should be an image available. And in the resources, exactly, there are two images over here. And these images are provided with a media fast processor here, which is using the field name media to provide references. And when you go to the front end, you will see that there is um, something based on that media for example we have about over here and then we have the mission and this mission is using one image in this part for the menu and the other one is used um, when you create uh, go to the page to the to create the page header so 
what we do here is to provide the references variable filled with stuff by the file processor which is based on the field name media and I can show you in the debug output so when we go to the resources just have to add some debug output in the files so we have a template here we have a page template here we have a default page here we do some debug output maybe use a standard page 2 okay and now we can go back to the front end view maybe not to that page but to the one that we had before publications is over here now we just do the reload and there should be some debug output so that you can actually see what happens to the different parts within the uh, the sections over here so we have um the debug output now and um, I see there is somebody unfortunately stream goes on and off a lot this is something uh, which I got in the um, chat is this true for everybody or just um, for some of you I will just go on with the stream but uh, maybe you can just let me know in the chat um, okay so as you can see there are several variables over here and depending on uh, the stuff that we are going to show here um, we have other processors for example as you can see there's a variable called main navigation and the main navigation is created by a menu processor the menu processor basically says okay I want to provide a menu just like uh, I would do it with a uh, uh, with a um, TypeScript menu so under the hood in the PHP methods um, there is a TypeScript menu which is actually executed uh, and filled by some variables but uh, the advantage here is that you can use it with a more consistent uh, syntax and it's easier to understand and you don't have to use all these different wraps and stuff like this because this is later on done in the fluid template itself so when you go um, for example to the code section again we can see we have a menu processor over here we have a uh, levels then we have include spacer okay in this case it wasn't necessary because we didn't have any spaces it was just a default setting that we kept in there we have a title field that we can use for the title of the uh, links created by that um, menu processor and we have a variable name that we can hand over here so basically this part says give me a menu two levels deep including spacers use the title of the page as the title of the menus and uh, provide that in the variable which is called main navigation so when we go now to the Chrome window and back to the um, debug output you will see the main navigation in here and as you can see there are five items in the main navigation which is basically the top navigation that has been now overlaid by um, this debug output and when you now open the first part you can see that there are, are children over here so we have uh, data we have title we have link which is already created um, so you don't have to deal with typo link and stuff like that anymore you just get additional stuff um, on top of the data array of the page that is actually rendered in that part of the menu so you have a title we have a link even target and other things are possible active and current are marking um, the states of the menu so that you can just use um, these parts within the fluid template 
and then there is a children's section and in a children's uh, children's section you will get the sub menu items so this is uh, the stuff that we created with just a few lines of TypeScript within the menu processor okay so let's take another look to another menu which is the footer navigation basically this would be the one that you can see uh, when I go to the window without the cam and the chat that's the um, there's a menu on the lower left corner and this is the footer menu so in this case it's a, it's slightly different than the one that we showed before because in this case we have a special variant you know that may maybe know that from the TypeScript if you already did um, TypeScript menus uh, before so this one is a special directory and we used um, a TypeScript constant here so that the integrators or other people who are dealing with us uh, with this side package later on can fill in a container that this uh, special directory will be based on it always includes the spaces too and in this case we have additional uh, syntax which is telling them okay if there is a navigation title use that if not use the title so um, it's actually exactly the same that you already know um, from the TypeScript menus but without any wraps and we uh, provide that as a footer navigation variable so let's see what happens in the debug output now footer navigation is here we just have six items here and as you can see there is no children array anymore because this is not about levels and um, about a certain depth it's just um, a menu that is uh, created with one level and we have other menus in here because as I already told you um, we tried to provide most of the stuff that would have been done with a special news um, extension by these menu processors as well so for example we have sub navigation and parent sub navigation and other menus which are actually providing um, stuff based on the level UID so just to tell you how this works level UID can have uh, positive values and negative values just within uh, like within the title script menus um, that you used before so the positive UID will always be an absolute level so you have for example 0 1 2 or 3 which would mean okay show me a menu of that specific level negative values are always relative to the um, part where you already are so when you're currently on a page on level 3 minus 1 would be level 3 minus 2 would be level 2 minus 3 would be level 1 so you go back up in the chain and you can say okay give me a menu of pages from my parent page or from my grand parent page so you can have different variants of menus that might be um, useful in different scenarios so let's go a bit deeper now i will go to the other window without the cam as you can see we have this part here which is again a menu processor which is creating a so-called teaser navigation the teaser navigation again can use data processing so that's the f this is the fun fact about the data processors you can use them to create nested processors so first you create uh, process um, the menu items and while processing the menu items these menu items get enhanced with additional information in this case we have um, the media field again with a file processor we have a database query processor which is um, basically working like the content um, element that you might know from TypeScript so you have a selector um, where you can give a table uh, where uh, some other information a PID uh, where the 
content should be taken from. In this case, it's a field UID because the UID is given by the menu processor and now you can get the first element in column zero of the TT content table on that particular page within the menu. So this is the teaser content. You don't have to add um, more elements or additional elements or uh, enhance the page with additional content fields or stuff like that. It's just not necessary. You can just use the first content element to create the actual teaser. And we have a submenu here, um, which is then creating a so-called calendar navigation uh, for that teaser, which is a very specific case for um, some items that should provide a calendar. So as you can see, this nesting um, is done with just adding another data processing, and then you get um, the additional enhancements of the menu items that we created before. So let's go to the Chrome window again and see how this is working now. Maybe better without the cams uh, and the chat. So when we go to the teaser navigation, you can see this has four items and the items have the data, the title, the link that you saw before. And now you can see here we have files, which is then provided by the field name media, by the references here, by the files processor. If you don't give it any specific name, the variable name is files. Um, so when you no ga now go to um, the next line, you will see teaser content. There was none for this teaser navigation, but there are some items for the calendar navigation. So this is filled automatically and you can always access that from within your fluid templates. Now let's go back to the code screen. And as you can see, we have some additional things like here's the empty teaser navigation. As you can see, the first one was created with a level UID one. And now if this is empty, we switch to the one with the level UID two, which is just um, a level up in the page tree so that you can get the content from there. And we have some more things here, which is a very special thing here with a database query processor, which is actually creating the categories and other things. So this is already very, very um, yeah, useful uh, out of the box. You can still enhance that, which is something I can show later on. But um, now you can see here um, how this actually works when we go to the template and how we deal with that. So now let's take some of the partials. What we did is we created several partials so that we can go to uh, the navigation part. And in the navigation part, there are sections. Of course, you can do this in a different way and you can do uh, use um, separate partials for um, each and every navigation variant. But uh, in most of the cases, this is not really necessary. So um, we thought it would be a better idea to have all the navigation uh, partials within just one navigation HTML and use sections for that. Now we go to the debug output here and remove that so that it will not be in the way anymore. And we can add some debug output to the main navigation. Okay. Or maybe we just use the... Uh, maybe, maybe it's good to use the output of all available things in here. Okay, let's see if this, wor this works out. Just activate the Chrome window again. Reload the page. Yeah. So what you can see is that we hand over the main navigation here 
and we are in the main navigation section. So what we do is we go to the main navigation array and do it for each of that and add some other things that we might um, get from somewhere else. So we have the major part of the main navigation will be in the content section over here, which is div class main navigation. We have the first level, then we have for each main navigation as navigation item. We create a link, um, a, a list item, um, le, uh, li tag, um, and inside there is a link. And as you can see, we don't need the type of link here anymore because we have the navigation item dot link, so we can directly access the link which has been created by the menu processor before. So we can go back to the Chrome window to just take a look at that. We have the main navigation. We got the link here, so there will be about in this in this section. If there are other links which are not actually handled by the um, new slug feature of Type 3 CMS9, you might see some additional uh, index PHP or whatever parameters here, but still the link will be working just as is and you don't have to deal with the uh, um, with the type of link uh, features anymore. Okay. Can you give uh, some sort info what data I get in a second level data processor? Okay, of course, we can do that. Um, for example, we can go to the teaser navigation and in the teaser navigation we have for example, the calendar navigation. So what you get in the processor is basically, maybe we can go back to the code, it will be better visible over there. Maybe back to section 60, which was here. Okay, so when you go to the first level and you create a menu processor, this menu processor then will provide records and uh, the records just have all the fields available um, that you would get when you just uh, do a debug output on that record. So actually you can access anything of the data array of that record which would be visible in the debug output here yeah, we have the first item we have data and here we have the UID the PID all the different fields and when you now go to the second part here this is just um, using the field name media so if there is some media in the data array here you will use that for the fast processor if there is some data in the field UID which is usually the case. There is no case where you can get a page or other things from a processor when there, where there is no UID because almost everything, maybe except some MM tables in Type 3, is based on um, UID. So we will get the UID for um, the feature that we are using here. You will get this by field UID and we have field name media and here we have again field UID. You can use all fields to um, just create additional data processing based on information of the data you used with the processor before. So actually uh, under the hood is just a, a, a for each loop running through all the records giving all the information to the data processors and then you can have a nested structure of course you should do that um, yeah not too much because of course this would create performance issue if you overdo it so when you create a huge amount of levels with a huge amount of data add a huge amount of media files and stuff like that you will carry around a monster array with lots of information you will create um, a huge number of um, queries so you should always think about the performance issues there. You can uh, do it for a second level, which is not that much, but um, 
depending on the server you are running on, for example, when you are running in a kind of shared hosting and you have limited amount of time and limited on a limited amount of memory, it will even uh, run you into problems when you um, uh, go for a cached site. So, uh, but especially if uh, there is uncached content, you should um, take care um, and you should maybe consider doing it another way. Okay. I think um, this is um, enough for the first uh, part. Maybe I can give you some outlook on some additional things that are possible um, with this solution too. Because, for example, you can create your own data processing. Grid Elements does that now. There's a Grid Children processor, and the Grid Children processor is providing grid children out of the box um, just by using the same techniques. So when you go to the TypoScript section you will see that there is a setup which is just implementing data processing within a basic fluid template which is based on lib.contentElement and you have some parameters that you can hand over to um, this grid children processor. Um, I will go into more details within another session about uh, grid elements and the data processor of grid elements, but this is something that you can do. And then the final thing I wanted to show you is how to implement that. Just have to check that. Where where we implemented it? I think it's on X tables. Maybe you can just search for it. I'm currently not sure where we implemented it ex exactly. Data processing. Children processor. No children processor, okay. Um, okay, so I just wanted to show you that it is possible to create this uh, grid shoulder processor. We will do the rest of the stuff within uh, the session about grid elements. And now we can come to the question and answer session. Okay, I will go to another view now. Um, Yeah, exactly. As Benji, Benji already um, is telling you in the chat, it's more easy to do it with a data processor than you would do it with a TypeScript uh, menu. So it's easier to handle and you just have to deal with the, the, the HTML. You have no wraps and other things to do. So any other questions? Yeah, actually, um, it's recommended to do it um, because when you um, have the um, processors in place and you have Fluid template in place, it's much easier, uh, especially for people who are actually not integrators but have to deal with the templates and stuff like that. It's much easier to create that because they can do it. Um, they can do it um, just like they used to. So they have just to learn Fluid, they have to know their variables and the debug output, and they can create all the stuff based on Fluid, and they don't have to deal with the TypeScript. So the TypeScript is just providing the data, selecting the templates, and the rest can be done by people who don't need to know about TypeScript, PHP, all the other uh, things. They just can do that with the view helpers um, of Fluid and um, access the variables. Okay, any other questions?
Okay, oh no, Joe is gone. I don't know if I'm still there. Um, I hope it's just uh, the case for Benji um, and not for the, all the other people. So, um, ah, okay, cool. So the idea now is just to tell you a bit about how you can support us and how we will go on. So the idea is to have similar tutorials like that, maybe uh, once a week or maybe even more of them. Um, and we will have other tutorials uh, which will be more like a series. For example, we will have um, a number of tutorials showing you how to create a website from scratch with the CMS9 and a side package and maybe grid elements and some other extensions, but just a few. And how to create, for example, a small blog and st stuff like that. Um, there will be other things where you, we will have a question and answer session. For example, you can call in then, you can go to, um, to Slack, do a call in and we can answer stuff directly. You can even do that anonymously so you don't have to tell, your, tell us uh, your real name or the project that you're working on. We can still try to help you. Um, ah, there's another question. Is there any option to use a page browser for a data processing output? Um, basically, yes. Maybe I can uh, just switch back to a screen and show that. Um, because as far as I remember, we did something like this um, within the navigation. So, pa paginator would be the widget. Yeah. As you can see, there's a publication teaser page menu. And this is based on the teaser navigation and you can just use the fluid um, widget paginate to just create um, a paginated menu based on the information of the teaser navigation. So this will just create the whole thing that you maybe know from news. I think in news that it's already implemented uh, with a paginate uh, widget. It's not that well known, but you can uh, easily use that without having to deal with a real XBase extension, which will then create the pagination. You can even use that um, with the data coming from the menu processor. So this can be done, yes. Okay, just uh, to go on with the information about what we are going to do and how you maybe can support us. First of all, um, Twitch is connected to um, Amazon. So if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can actually get a Twitch Prime account as well without having to pay any additional amount. And you can use that Twitch Prime account to support us. So you just uh, go um, to our channel once a month and you can support us there without having to pay anything in addition. So if you're not supporting supporting anybody else already with this Twitch Prime account, this would be an easy option to support what we are doing here. Uh, the other thing is you can just uh, subscribe uh, um, to Twitch and you can provide some um, subscriptions with um, which are actually paid uh, on a monthly basis. You can have one-time donations even uh, with Twitch and there are other options that we will do uh, show you in uh, some other um, tutorial maybe about how Twitch is working because some of you might not know actually what Twitch is, how it is working because it's more uh, like um, a streaming platform for gamers. But um, I think this will be something which is uh, eas easy to deal with and we'll show you how to uh, support us in several ways. So, um, if there are no questions left, I will say this would be the finish for the first session. Thanks uh, for joining us. Um, come back next time. I will do a schedule uh, soon so that you can see when, of, uh, when the tutorials will be available and uh, when other sessions will happen and we will um, then provide you with additional information on Facebook, on uh, Twitter and the other channels so that you will actually know what is going on. Thanks for listening and bye.